Annika Ransom on camera. Folks, this is the moment. We've all been struggling, but sometimes things just work. And Haha! Yes! yes. <laughs> Very good. We did it. We didn't get we the did. Yes, there we go. Okay. okay. Um, did, 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 you, did you tag me, Suzanne? Are, are we on my timeline too? I did tag, uh, tag me. Because you, you, you restarted a couple of times. Yes, too many times when it works. Um, Yes, let's see. Let's just go check. Let's make sure everything is fine. Let's not assume it's just fine. Let's look at what this looks like on my page. Um, I will go. Okay, my page is working. Let's look at your page. Oh, yeah, we're on my page too. I can see us. Wonderful. It's working. <laughs> cool. So it's just the two of us now this time. But yeah. um, at least um, we're there. Well, let's just give um, people a minute or two to join us. It's, yeah, it's a bit weird that I'm over your face. <laughs> <laughs> can I move you with this? No, I can't. So I kind of, I probably have to do the yeah, um, yeah. adapt to the situation here with this. It's a bit weird. Yeah, so I have to do this. I so can't folks, do yeah. So I have to kind of watch what I'm doing with the screen. Okay. So people, just let us know in the comment section if you find that things are not looking the best or not not kind of enjoyable for you. Um, I can't even see the comments much. All right, and I have to hold this now. Is that really the truth? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> All right. You, you, what? Can open the laptop and then you can watch the comments. Yes. I, I see myself twice on my laptop and on my phone. Okay, let's do that. Let's put it here. Now, this is really cool. Yes. The first. Both of us <laughs> are joining a Facebook Live together. It is. Um, it's the, my very first time, obviously, to do an interview like that. Um, mm -hmm. Very fun. So I'm really proud of us. We did just step up. We talked about that in the prep. And we did not give up. And that's the, the main point of, um, yeah, life changes all the time. And there's new Facebook settings all the time. And... Um, yeah, I actually just learned from Hannah Kathleen, like literally two minutes before we were going um, to start talking about this interview, how to do it. So big shout out to Hannah for um, teaching me how to, to do this. I've been looking for options to do it with software all day and um, I didn't find any good ones. And here we go, actually from the phone. So for everyone who wants to do this kind of interview, go on your phone, not your computer. And um, there... You can um, invite someone who is watching your life to join the screen. How fun is that? Like that's super cool. You can do that with anything. Um, I'll certainly use that um, outside the interviews too in the future. So um, very very happy to um, present this woman here to you. <laughs> Tineke is has been an entrepreneur for twenty eight twenty nine years by now. Tineke. In January, 28 years. So I say 28 years. <laughs> yeah, so 28 years, so lots of business. And you started in the, the sports industry, right? Yeah, yeah. Out, outdoor and survival sports, like hiking, ca kayaking, rafting, climbing, mountain biking. Wow, yeah. you're a real outdoor, uh, the outdoorsy person. And a champion too, yeah. aren't you? What, what, did you? what did you do professionally there, or professional sports? Uh, freestyle whitewater kayaking. Uh, when, when you um, stay in a big wave, a roller coaster, um, and and you do some tricks there, like cartwheel spins, somersaults, and stay in the wave for 30 seconds and do as many moves as you can. 
So that means actually you, you go under the water and you turn yep. around and stuff like that. Yep. That sounds really yep. scary. It is, <laughs> but not you do it a lot. <laughs> did did yeah. you ever have any near death experiences doing that? Yeah, I did. All right. Yeah. So I, what was that like? I had a friend who drowned, and I nearly drowned once too. All right. Yeah. If if you kayak that long, and yeah, I've seen somebody nearly drown, but she was rescued. Yeah, that's awkward. That's the that's the shadow part of of the sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Horrible. So yeah, struggle brings us also um, to uh, the topic of being an entrepreneur. Um, mm -hmm. Like we, we usually don't die in business, but our bad business can go bankrupt. Um, on, and at the same time, uh, yeah, there's a lot we can do to improve our businesses and to work on ourselves and to, to grow. and. The aim for this interview is uh, to to educate people on what they can do um, from from your point uh, perspective as a coach and um, as an entrepreneur for the next year. So we want to use this this broadcast to talk about uh, this year and next year and what people can do to uh, improve their game to step up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. are you ready to do that? Yeah, we totally are. You, you know, the beginning of January is always a good uh, moment to reflect, have a look. Uh, are you satisfied? How did it go last year? And how do you want it to go in 2018? So I think the, the timing of the call is perfect. Most mm -hmm. people have holiday now. So <laughs> maybe they don't want to look at a business video. Yeah, but Let's I think see. the ones... I think the ones joining here, they do, and they will be very um, grateful to um, to to have any and any kind of gold nuggets to to um, to start planning their year. Because really now, folks, it's the time for you to um, to start planning ahead. There is evidence that people who do have a plan in place do a lot better than the ones who don't plan at all whatsoever. I personally have been planning since university, even in university, I had a year plan. I would always go um, away for a day or two, um, just in complete solitude and work out my next year's plan. And um, that has worked very well for me. Um, I, of course, I didn't never achieved all the goals, but I achieved often more things than I had planned. And um, yeah, my, my career had been quite successful. So planning is absolutely essential. Can you, Tineke, kind of walk us through the, um, the categories of life or of business that people should be looking at? And can you please be a little detailed about um, what aspects specifically people should be um, looking at? Well, the, for me, the most important thing uh, always is your mindset. Um, your mindset determines uh, your view uh, of business, your way of life, your way of perspective, um, and mindset towards goal setting, towards financial mindset, uh, towards um, creating, uh, believing. It's 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 the most most important thing. And then you were talking about planning. You know. It's, this, this is a system that I created. It's called the Blueprint for a Successful Business Makeover. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it always starts with mindset. And next, many entrepreneurs forget to plan. And I'm really glad you do. And you say that you are successful. And I, I can only approve. Um, make a financial plan. You know, I, I studied a female business uh, behavior. Um, and I questioned about 400 female business owners and solo uh, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And... 66% of the women do not plan their year. Wow. 66. And of six business women, not just general women, but women in yeah. business. Yeah, and 60% never makes a financial plan. Mm -hmm. And I, I must admit, uh, I was in business for 15 years and I wasn't aware that you should be making a, a, all these plans. But I overheard and I heard other people and I thought, you know, hey, if I want to be a better entrepreneur, I might start to do this. Um, and it was it took me many years 
to to do it finally uh, because I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know what the benefit was. My business was making a profit, so why would I care? That was my mindset. And you know, it came to a time that I thought, are you an entrepreneur or are you just playing with a hobby? And mm-hmm. I already paid staff at that moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was 15 years. I did my first uh, financial plan. I, I, I made it. Uh, it took me half a day, so it wasn't all that long. And from then on, I did it all the time because it gave me so much more relief. Um, ev- at every moment, I knew where I was. I knew how much I needed to make per month. I had financial targets. And I knew whether I was on track, uh, whether I was ahead, whether I was behind. And when I was behind, I knew I had to step up and I had to take a little bit more action. Mm -hmm. So um, planning is really important. Goal setting is too. Whenever you set a goal, um, it has to be challenging. Uh, it, 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 It shouldn't scare you because then you won't go into action. It shouldn't bore you because then you won't go into action too. But it, it should, you should feel excited about your, the goals that you uh, set. And something else most entrepreneurs don't do, not specifically women, is they don't know where to be with a business in five years from now. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's pretty important. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for anyone starting out, how do you suggest to tackle this? It seems to be quite a, an abstract um, thing to do difficult, scary, too much to even try. So, mm. like, what would be my very first step if I wanted to have, it, like, say, a financial plan for next year? Yeah, the, the, if you do your own uh, bookkeeping, uh, it's just add up all the invoices that you send out, mm-hmm. and that's your turnover, that's how much you made this year, and then say, okay, I want to I wanna do more. Okay. And then... Uh, determine how many products or service do you need to sell to, to get this kind of turnover and then if we get more specific you need to know your fixed costs your annual costs mm-hmm. um, your uh, incidental costs you need to uh, put it in groups but I think uh, Suzanne I send you a link of a blog post that I wrote today about yes. how to get your first financial plan yes maybe put that in the comment section yes I'll do uh, that. I don't need to go into that much detail because mm-hmm. otherwise we will be talking for half an hour about how to make your first financial plan and I think we have so much more to talk about. That is right, yeah. I just wanted to really cover this. I've just copied and pasted it there. Um, yeah. So people check out that link later. Um, now we're still going to go into more depth. Um, and um, yes, so... We've covered only like two steps of, uh, of the, the, the blueprint. But Something finance else is to... really key. Like I just like this is relevant, and people do try to. Um, yeah, it's many women's not favorite topic, and yeah. um, uh, and uh, it is important because like I yeah. read in I read in your um, I read in your study that actually fifty percent of the fifty two percent of the women um, said, and that was the majority um, of all the votes make less than 20k profit so that's kind of ridiculous um not ridiculous uh, it's small. and you're talking about now but do you know that i am in doubt whether they understood the question right okay whether they might have thought it was turnover or profit yeah so you, you know, know. 30 okay of the way my country make less than twenty five thousand turnover mm-hmm. uh, um, so if we would, if they would understand it right, they would have twenty thousand profit. Well, that's not even uh, enough to live the whole year. I would, I would say. But um, the other study, which is not mine, thirty-five uh, percent of the women have less turnover than twenty-five thousand. Mm-hmm. Then there's nothing to live. That's not even a business, in in my opinion. And mm-hmm. I'm sorry, you know, I know. We all work hard and we all uh, do our best and we all want to give as much value as we can. But we women, we need to start paying attention to the numbers too and to the money too. Because, you know, women and money usually is not always the best combination. Women usually are not wired about money. 
it's changing, uh, but it's it's money makes everything possible. Everything mm. you want your business is possible with more money, and it never starts with um, cr employing more people or um, helping more people. You always need money to do that. Otherwise, you're a volunteer, and that's there's no problem. But then, don't think that you're a business owner. Mm. Yeah, you need money. Like what helped me at one point, um, I had um, limiting beliefs around um, uh, money too. Until I started to think about mm. money as a form of um, energy and as a form of like whatever I have in the bank is, a, is kind of a, a form of stored energy. So whenever I need to make something happen, I can use this this energy to find myself the help that I need. Mm. And yeah. Um, yeah, so and that 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 was fine because we, we do a lot for other people, especially us women, um, a lot yeah. pro bono, and we give our energy, and we should get getting something back for it. And if we get something back for it, we should you know have it um, in our savings account so we can use it again, and that way we become more and more powerful. So I'm completely yeah. with you. All right, hey, Susan. Yes, money, money is also about value. Um, women. Uh, often criticize themselves a lot more than men do. You know, it's that little voice in our head. We, we need or want to be perfect, most of us. Uh, and and we, we want to be in control. Uh, but asking a good price um, means that you value yourself, that you value the service that you deliver, that, the, that you value the products that you sell. Um, and it's, it's the other way around for your client. If you don't ask a good price, they don't value what you give or what you deliver. And it can be super good. But if the price is not right, it's not good for you and it's not good for your client. Okay. So it's, there's so much around money. I, I, tra I, I have a few trainings about money mindset. I have assessments about money mindset and, uh, yeah, I just discovered there's so much more in business than just money mm -hmm. mindset. So yeah, yeah well, but it is what mindset is the first step of, of your process, right? And money, money is is part of that first mindset yeah. step. So what are the other parts of of mindset? Um, the other parts of mindset. Oh, do you like, really want? It? I think I think it's better to to walk through the eight steps of the blueprint. All right. Yeah, it's, so branding is one of them, um, and that's something which women often find difficult too. They don't like to brag about themselves. In my study, and do download the study, uh, people. Uh, that's that's one of the things we don't like about men. Um, they are ego-centered. Um, they show off. Uh, and we, uh, for example, we only say yes that we can do it if we are 100% sure that we can deliver. Uh, a man would just say, okay, I'll do it, and then find out how. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a, a th I learned, you know. Um, I partnered up at one point with a, with a man, so we had a business together. And so far, the biggest group I had to... Um, taken on was 50 people uh, going kayaking and mountain biking in Belgium, in the Ardennes. And uh, I had this um, request for a hundred and I said to him, okay, we can't do that. And he said, why not? I said, because we don't have enough equipment, we don't have enough staff, uh, I wouldn't know where to uh, get accommodation. And he said, sell it. And I said, yeah, but how are we going to organize it? He said, sell it and then we'll solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And I sold it. And they did buy, and of course we did uh, solve the problem. But I would not have done it if he had not ordered me to do it. And that's mm -hmm. such a tip thing, what I see from women. So we need to be more confident about our skills. Uh, we need to be more confident about um, how good we are. So branding is, is very important. Um, business branding, personal branding. And then... Uh, nowadays, you, you cannot have a business, in my opinion, anymore without uh, some form of online marketing, social media marketing, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, any other social media, email marketing, uh, video marketing, uh, newsletters, uh, blog, vlog. There is so much out there and it's all free. Um, mm -hmm. It is a lot. 
and I always advise my clients to just start doing one, uh, mm -hmm. one thing. Well, the next thing which you should be taking care of is uh, your team. And when you work on your own, I often hear this, that people, uh, entrepreneurs say, yeah, well, I don't employ people. I have no team. We all have. Mm -hmm. We all talk to people. We have p friends who help us. Uh, we have partners who help us. And they belong to our team too. Uh, but also people we employ, people we outsource stuff to. Um, so they, they are important. Eh? The team that you have around you, how do they support you and how do you uh, work with them? How will they not only work for you, but how will they love to do stuff for you? You know, they don't mm -hmm. go, go, go to the job pay like so many people do. And that's mm -hmm. a skill. And how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do you do that? How do you get people to, to wanting to work for you? Well, re always reward them. Never um, uh, treat them as children. That, you know, people buy houses and that's big and huge responsibilities. And when they are in the job, we think we need to tell them everything, how to do stuff. And that's killing for their creativity, for their um, uh, mm -hmm. taking initiative. Uh, and, and when you let them do that, uh, they become part of the business. It, the business becomes part of them. The mm -hmm. other thing which is important, you should know what your core values are uh, as a business owner. You should mm -hmm. know what your mission is. And everybody who works for you should at least be feeling the same thing about your mission. Mm -hmm. And you have to treat them well, give them a mm -hmm. lot of responsibility, allow them to make mistakes. Every mm -hmm. mistake is feet and, and it's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's very difficult good for, yeah, because you know, uh, what we all think is we can do it faster and we can do it better. And often, mm -hmm. yes, that is the case, but we cannot grow our business if we cannot delegate. It's mm -hmm. impossible. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. how do you think about hiring? Like, have you made mistakes hiring before? And how, did, how do you yeah. think currently about hiring and firing and growing a team? Um, the, the for hiring the first staff member, you know, on the payroll, uh, that's what I had, is the most difficult thing. And I see that with every entrepreneur who's scaling up. Uh, and th this is a decision which is often postponed too long. Uh, I always okay. advise when you can pay somebody for three months and you won't go bankrupt if uh, then then hire somebody because in three months you will know whether this person is capable usually the first person is somebody who, do, who takes over um, a lot of work f so that you can do more sales or so mm -hmm. you can do a lot more contact uh, or think more uh, about your business and do more strategic planning uh, so you should be able to make more money. Usually that's the case uh, with your first staff member. You, okay. Usually that's uh, an assistant. Um, and then you know in three months time if if you will make more money and if this person will, you, I mean, you will make more, but that's possible because you get more free time to do the things you're good at. Um, if you hire, uh, you take less uh, less risks, of course. So if you outsource to another uh, business or another um, uh, virtual assistant, for example, um, uh, yeah, you can give them work whenever you, you want to. You, you don't have a lot of risk. There are some things, though, which I don't like about that. It's very expensive. Usually mm -hmm. for the hourly rate pay here in, in, in my country, I can employ two people on my payroll. For this in, in, uh, for, uh, so I, uh, I have two hours at work. Um, uh, the good thing about a VA is usually they, they are specialists, so you don't need to tell them what to do, just how you want it done, and that's all. Uh, yeah. And yeah, maybe they have no time for you this week because they're busy with other uh, people work, uh, who they also work for. Mm -hmm. So it... it good and it has its bad things. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm still a fever of employing people, but yes, I've yes. made mistakes and I've come to situations that I had to let go of people and that's horrible. And I see that with every entrepreneur, it's the worst thing they need to do, let go of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 
country, it's 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 a big risk to employ people. Mm-hmm. When when we let, uh, let go of people, we need to give them a lot of money, <laughs> or mm-hmm. when they get sick. At the moment, at the current situation, still, we need to pay them two years of salaries, uh, and then oh, wow. we can sack them. Yeah, it's horrible. So, yeah. It's, we, I think we're the worst in the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that you, so it's you, a big liability. Yes. Yeah, so you say it's absolutely yeah. crucial to grow a business yeah. to delegate. Um, you say you um, yeah. cannot get it right always, and you you need to um, make a due diligence to find out um, who you're hiring maybe, and um, yeah. and also what the conditions are under which you can stop um, the the contract. Like you have to have these kind of um, settings, boundaries set up before you do anything, but mm-hmm. um, that should not scare you to to move on and and. Uh, see how you can delegate some of your business, yeah, the, the kind of the management of the business, so you can focus on growing your business yep. because you're the number one salesperson for your business and you are the Usually, visionary and you have to develop the, the products. Yep. That is your core Usually, job. Uh, the Usually, right. usually the, the business owner is the, is, is the salesperson too. Not always, but usually they are. So when you're not good at sales, you know, then the first p- person you hire should be a salesperson. And yeah. they should pay themselves back. If they don't, get rid of them straight away because then they're no good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And then moving on in the blueprint, what what's the next step? Um scaling up um so it's uh, accelerate your business that's probably what uh, and that mm-hmm. that's due to creating systems um how can you systemize your business how can you create systems so that you don't do things over and over and over again mm-hmm. but uh, uh, that you do them once and then you can repeat them uh, you have your uh, templates for uh, uh, repetitive uh, repetitive actions Mm-hmm. Uh, and also you have uh, the tasks, so everybody knows what to do at which moment and mm-hmm. who's responsible. Um, it's it's important also to make um, a schedule of your business to see what kind of products or services do I have and who's responsible for those and how much does every service bring into the business. Mm-hmm. Because um, what we like to do is create new products and services that, that gives energy and we usually are very creative, but we forget that there are is a whole range of other products and services and sometimes they take up space on our website or in our uh, brochure, but, but we don't sell them anymore. Um, and, and it's getting confused uh, about what is the core business. So that's often what I do. Um, and then, they, yeah, they have to let go of certain product ranges because they cost money. But sometimes entrepreneurs don't even know. Yes. And so know your numbers uh, is, um, is the yep. motto here, right? Exactly. Yeah, again. Yes. Okay. And, and what is uh, really important is, uh, is flow and ease. And that's, that's about... Um, Looking, taking care of yourself. Uh, how do you work? Uh, relaxed. Mm-hmm. Do what you like in the moment, uh, and in the moment you can create flow, and then work becomes really easy. Um, oh. you, whoop, phone drop. Uh, no, I just uh, flipped the screen for some reason. One okay. new discovery every minute here. Uh. <laughs> just press the uh. Sorry, guys. There, you just see my screen for a moment, but uh, yeah, we're back here. Sorry. Yes, I, that, that's very. Uh, I read that quote and I liked it a lot, and it, it kind of translates nicely to what we've been talking about. Um, you said it will be hard to have financial wealth without having uh, emotional health and and health in general, yeah. right? Yeah, true. So you have to like, take care of yourself. You have to. Uh, you know, so many entrepreneurs. Uh, work and work and have a busy uh, life. They don't have enough time for their social life, not enough time for their family. Um, and usually it's not necessary to work all that many hours. Um, I always say you shouldn't work hard, you should work relaxed, and then it doesn't matter how many hours you work. But when you work stressed, you are working hard. 
uh, and that's not healthy. <laughs> Uh, and also, when you work hard, it's uh, often you, you are not working in flow, so uh, faith doesn't step in, there's no coincidences, there's no luck. Uh, yeah. Many entrepreneurs who are successful, they say, oh, you know, I, I was just at the right time, at the right place, I have been so lucky. Yeah. Uh, that's creation. You know? mm -hmm. Some people are never lucky, uh, and some people always are lucky, but that's because they do what they love doing, they work on their energy, they feel good in the moment, and when you feel good in the moment, you are aware about uh, other possibilities or other people talking uh, st about stuff, and yeah, you are more focused, more centered, and then magic uh, can happen, and then all of a sudden things will, will work out without you having to do anything. That's like right. I, us too. I, I experience that a lot. And um, yeah, sure. well, like as we talk about this, I wonder um, what what are the ingredients for an environment like that? Is it just the mindset okay. that I'm trying to be relaxed? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's it's also um, uh, listen to your gut feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever feel like uh, calling somebody, don't write it on your to-do list, but do it immediately. Mm -hmm. Because you should have the signal and at, right at that moment, often the person thinks about you or mm -hmm. uh, I have a few people yes. and, and then, then they're uh, available. When you write it on your to-do list uh, and you call them the next day, that, that magic moment is passed. So you might still... Um, uh, speak to them, but they are in a different mode. Yes, uh, that's that's one of the examples. Uh, whenever you feel about something, do it immediately. If you don't like doing something, don't mm -hmm. do it. But wait until you get inspiration to do it. And this okay. is hard, especially when you work with deadlines. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do it, and sometimes the deadline passes. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, it doesn't matter. It's, mm -hmm. it's out of nowhere. It's but people who are really in a fixed mode and they need to do things their mm. way, this is undiscussable. They yes. they can't this uh, this thing. So it's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and look around you, see if you uh, see you know if you see a signpost on, on a on a truck, and all of a sudden your your mind drifts off, and you have a solution for something which you have been working on very hard for mm -hmm. a few days, and yet didn't come. So it it can be a lot easier if if you dare to to be in the moment and do mm -hmm. what feels good in. Yes, yes, I absolutely with you there. It's it's all about whether being in the future. Um, like mm. being a planner, which I used to be um, totally when I was a student. Like I always lived in the future, worked for the future, had a um, a very clear plan on when to study what, just to to make it through the tests and all. And um, and um, I've given that up, and I've, I've, I am much more in the moment. And I, as you say, I do go with my impulses, and I, I just go wherever I think I, I should be going. And um, when I'm at conferences, for example, or I call people that I feel the mo in the moment I should be calling them. And that, that, that has really made the, the difference. And, and mm. it's true what you say, the more you do it, the more confidence you, you get into that process. Um, yep. For anyone who's very rational, it's not a very logical way to do things. <laughs> and, um, and we're also not taught to, to do things this way, really. Just you know, told, you, told us, go with the flow, just uh, do whatever yeah. feels right. Um, the best, best example is how we met. You know, that's, 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 it, it is, this, that's the proof of how this works. And I yes. um, we never met, met, you're from Switzerland, I'm from yes. Holland. You at some point said, hey, I want to interview you. And we, we were texting through Messenger and then all of a sudden we went quiet. And I was in London at a JT Fox event and uh, I was in action mode and I wrote all these bullet points down and I thought, hey, why not do them straight away? I feel mm. good about it now. If I send you a text message, mm -hmm. so hey, I want to do this interview still. Yes. And you said, yeah, too, but I, I am traveling a lot. And I said, yeah, I'm traveling too. And you said, oh, hey, where are you? I said, I'm in London. And you say, I'm too. 
And I said, you're not at the JT Fox event, are you? And you yes. were. <laughs> and I was. Uh, and yeah, and, and I so was. two of us meet, intending to talk to each other, mm. and we are sitting at the same event. And, you know, that's something you cannot think of. Uh, yes, we were like literally, what, 10, minute, 10 meters, 15 minutes, meters apart, but more than that. <laughs> and and it's never like, we didn't even recognize each other from the profile pictures, right? We had to describe our outfits and everything to make sure we would find each other. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. True. yeah. And, and had, sure. had I not reacted on, the, on, on that impulse from, hey, uh, I need to uh, send her a message now, I would have put it on my to-do list and I would have done it on Wednesday mm -hmm. and we wouldn't have met personally. Now, now, we've, now we have been able to hug and talk and, uh, you know, it's, mm. it's exactly. interesting. Mm. Yeah, so, so that's how... That's very important. Yeah, and, and as I say, it's like I, I can't really give a recipe, and you probably can't give one either on how to do okay. it. It's it, it, there, it, there is um, be grateful, always be grateful for everything in your life, the small it is, because yeah. that uh, enhances your energy. Take care of yourself very well. Go outdoors. Go in the nature. Um, Whenever you feel bad uh, about something, track it. Don't go into why am I feeling bad. It's not important. Just see how you can get yourself out as fast as you can by thinking of more positive things so, uh, uh, or by talking to positive people. It's all about raising your energy. And when your energy raises, your frequency raise, uh, raises and your frequency attracts other things. Mm. So for me, that's, those are important ingredients. Listen to that impulse and the more you and tr uh, trust, you know, when, whenever you have a problem and you don't know the solution, let go and trust and believe that the solution will appear at some time. And that's difficult when there is no proof of it yet. But if you can allow the solution, the solution is already there. You just cannot see it yet. And if you can trust it and allow it to get closer to you, then you will attract it and it will appear. Either by an impulse you get or by talking to somebody and that person says something and all of a sudden you know by reading a sentence in a book or watching the television. But mm. you, you must dare to let go of things. Mm. So for me, things work. And yeah, it, it gets better and better. Yes, it's true. It's kind of um, accelerating. And uh, yeah, and it's even more important, that I find, um, the more connections we have and the faster we can actually see the results of what we want to to achieve um the higher the um, the, the challenges or the, the bigger the challenges are to become and uh, the more the, even the more present we have to to be together right yeah so, yeah yeah it so, all happens in the, yeah but it, it yes. is difficult are you in the future or i used to be in the present too Yes. So Annette is saying, I'm learning to trust the gut feeling and the little voice. Very good, Annette. Thumbs up. And Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you. Yeah, just like this exact moment. Thank you. Yeah. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, um, and like maybe if we, do you want to go on with the blueprint or should we transition into, into um, how to have um, kind of an environment that supports you, which includes coaching? Um, or would you like to, to continue with the blueprint at the moment to give people ideas of what Blue they should be working at uh, for 2018? Yeah. There's only one more step, and that's that's that you need to that you need to find help, and that you need people around you to support you, and that's help and support. So we are there. So that's yeah, it's it's the perfect moment to talk about it. Um, we discussed this before the interview started and uh, you asked me, do you have a coach? I said, yeah, I have a personal coach always since eight years already. And he made me help grow so much as, as a, as a woman, um, and also as a business owner. And yeah, I have a business coach. I always have business coaches. Mm. I sold my first business after 20 years and since then I spent nearly 100,000 euro in my personal in my personal and business development mm -hmm. um, the business I used to do there was nothing with online marketing I was not a per, uh, speaker I was no author um, I didn't know about branding about uh, marketing I was I did employ t a team 
but I never thought I was a good manager. So a lot of skills uh, I've, I've learned afterwards. And I'm, I'm glad because now I feel so much more comfortable uh, helping my clients. Um, mm -hmm. It's easy to see what they need now from all the experience I've had and have. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when, when people, um, like it's quite different from like to, to be a business owner and run a business and, uh, and coach people on how for them to run a business. Like how do you think about that? Okay, that's a question I've never thought about, to be honest. Why do you think it's a lot different? Well, you, when you have your own business, it, everything depends on on you and um, the profits yep. and losses are yours. When you coach somebody, and there's plenty of people coaching other people, um, then um, people will take in your advice and hopefully it's good advice. and. Um, but people also have to to do their due diligence on people the people they get coached by and like yep, um, I'm I'm very um, like a, I've had many coaches and and not um, every coach has um, brought the results that I was um, aiming for so um, I just want to help people understand how they can um, choose a coach for themselves. Okay. I I understand your question. Um, yeah, there's so much out there. Uh, what I say in my book, um, see if they speak and then go and uh, visit uh, a presentation. See if they have written uh, e-books uh, or if they are an author. I, I've written two books, a Dutch book and, uh, and a, an English book. Um, see if you can have a free uh, consultation with them. So that you can feel a match. For me, that's also very important as uh, as the business accelerator. I always want to talk to people first. And, and for me, I, there's never an issue, can I help you or not? Uh, that, that I, In the beginning, I wasn't always that sure about it. But now, you know, I do this for six years and I know I can help everybody. But for me, the most important thing is how, how is our energy? Um, because whenever we connect, uh, uh, then the magic can happen. Um, I can teach skills and I do that. I give advice and but the, the, when the intuition steps in, um, I can give advice which I've never ever told anybody else before. I don't sometimes mm. know where it's amazing. And mm. I need to experience that uh, when I'm in the moment with my clients and if that doesn't happen or if somebody's not coachable some uh, some people I'm I'm very frank I'm very direct but I always mean it from my heart but if people start to defend themselves yes but mm -hmm. if they do that too often I say listen this is not going to work um, because then I believe they will not implement and they will do their own thing and then you know it's okay if I get the money but for me there's no fun I, I like it mm -hmm. when I can really help people and when they get results mm. and very good point think, there I think the result like yeah. the results part can you explore a little bit on on that the results bit yeah um, they always feel a better entrepreneur. They always have more insight in the, the complexity of their business. There, there are mm. things they never think about, you know, like um, how much money does a product or service uh, cost me? Or how much does this one, uh, this category make me or the other, uh, the other one? Um, some partnerships they, they never had before. Um, most most of the time they make more money i often help them guide uh, to get rid of people women in particular they, it takes mm. some age to get rid of people they, they try and try and try uh, and i know because i had to do it myself it is difficult to get rid yes. of people because it's not one person but you often it's a whole family um so i help them with that and, you know they can talk to anything about me and what they like a lot is that they feel more secure they sometimes are in doubt to make difficult decisions and when they talk to me usually mm. they knew but if i can reassure them they feel more confident and and they'll go into action straight away they don't doubt they don't hesitate um, so they get done a lot more um, often we do a lot about pricing 
there's mm-hmm. a lot of money in every business, so they save a lot of money mm-hmm. often. Oh, yeah, the, the websites we look at. Uh, some some entrepreneurs. Uh, I I just uh, yesterday I took on a new client. He's uh, he's going to start his own uh, online poker uh, coaching business. Uh, he's been a professional poker player, uh, and and he starts from scratch. But I also have uh, entrepreneurs who make millions, uh, and everybody is happy that they can talk to somebody. They're not mm-hmm. on their own. No mm-hmm. matter how much. There are things you cannot share with your staff because you are the boss. Of course. Yeah, I'm totally with you. It's important to have coaching. Yep. And mm-hmm. um, and yeah, like um, if you get the right coaches, coach or coaches, then uh, the money you spend on the coach, um, you will easily make back in other ways. Yeah. yeah. And uh, for me, that's the the main um, um, telltale whether the coaching works or not. Um, yeah. And, um, and, and, and I think people picking a coach should be, um, should be really looking at, at that. Um, it's not about being, like you do that for yourself. So pick someone that really helps you. Yeah, and, you, and look at someone. And nowadays everybody calls themselves a business coach, but some of them never had a business. Mm. They started coaching. People as their first business so what do you know exactly yes so um, I think that's very valuable um, do you want to say anything about um, how you like you, you say you're very authentic with your clients I think that's one of the the other um, important import, important things to watch out for is someone who who is not afraid to to give it to you straight and yep. um, uh, that um, you may end up having a sleepless night um, or the other because um, they said something that you actually would have preferred not to hear. Um, so that's authentic- authenticity is very good. Um, what yep. about what about boundaries? Like, um, do you do you talk about boundaries before you start coaching? Like, do you set up expectations, what they can expect yeah. from you, what they cannot expect from you, what do you expect from yeah. them? Um, yeah. What what yeah. goes into the setup of a coaching relationship? Um, I always uh, have it in uh, in writing um, what they can expect, uh, what exactly is included. Um, and I tell them, you need to do it. I can only give you the advice. I can only show you, and I know it works because it works for different clients. It worked for me, but you need to do it. I'm not responsible for if you don't take action. So that's that's what I, I'm always very clear. Yes. Um, and our first talk is always about what are the goals with this uh, for your business whenever we work, to get, uh, work together. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So you have very clear goals to work towards and um, what you yourself and, and the client can measure themselves or yourselves against. Yeah, I like that. It's, um, it's very transparent. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a negotiation trainer mm-hmm. and um, I always um, uh, try to get people to, to talk about boundaries um, before they start working with each other. I find that very, um, just from my own experience from failed mm-hmm. businesses mm-hmm. as well, uh, from from the corporate world, even when you do not clarify things beforehand, things may go very wrong. And um, once they have gone wrong, it takes ten times, hundred times more energy, money, nerves. Yeah, you even may lose the the, the passion for business over conflicts that can arise from yeah from not That's setting good, things up when it correctly. Happens. Have you not had? At some point, a feeling where you didn't listen to. Of course, yes, yeah, exactly. Always, and I just did not insist on talking it out. You, you, some point, but you ignored it. Of course. Yeah, and that's what we all do because we 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 want to get the client, we want to make the money. If you dare to say no to, uh, and, and and maybe you need the money really desperately, but if you dare to say no to uh, a client of which is obvious, obviously not good for you, 
-hmm. then some something else will come come your way yes very important yeah very important yep. point so my yeah. batteries run out so yes. how the charge works so i have 10 percent. so Good. i might at some point just yes get, get off the call without wanting to <laughs> yes so uh, that's it and then let's just move into maybe um wrapping things up and giving people um a little bit of uh, maybe you top one, two, three advice points for how they should be planning 2018, what to do um, to set themselves okay. up for success in so, 2018. Yeah, Re read, uh, scroll down and see the, for the people who joined later, scroll down and see the, the blog post about how to make your financial plan. And once you have done that, you can make your annual plan. And in your annual plan should be the amount of activities, uh, services or products that you sell, uh, the, the, the efforts uh, you need to do to, uh, to get this kind of turnover. So do you need to do marketing? Do you need to employ extra staff? Do you need to outsource more? So that should be in your year plan. And then work accordingly. Uh, don't plan too specific. Don't plan your whole day from, from hour to hour. And I know there are a lot of coaches, especially men, who say you need to do this. But for me, you need to have a space for creativity, for flow, for intuition uh, and, and the way you feel. You know, sometimes I can plan a whole day and if it's one o'clock and I don't want to work anymore, I don't work anymore. I go home because I don't feel like working. Um, at some very brave of you to admit that. that. Very, very nice. <laughs> Very nice to, to admit that, you know, because yeah, yeah, that, that's one of the freedoms of the entrepreneur, freedoms over time. Yeah. Yeah. And you should use it. We, we limit ourselves because of that and we think we always need to work and it's just a mindset. It's, it's, it's a, a, you know, a corset that, that we've put on and it's yeah. not true. And especially uh, women often understand when I talk about this to men, they get really angry and they think that I don't uh, know what it's all about because my business is not as big or because I, I'm divorced now, but before I had a husband and you know, your husband must be supporting you and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if, if, if people are interested in buying my book, uh, please visit my website, Maximum Business Growth for Women. Mm -hmm. .com. Let's put that uh, link in the show notes too. Come uh, talking for ages, but I'm afraid my phone is going to drop dead pretty yes. soon now. Speaker press. Um, I'll, I'll do it in a moment. Yes. So I, I'll just uh, wrap up and um, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oops, like, sorry. Now I turn on your your page. Oh, yes. uh, my website. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to put your book in the in the show notes and I by accident uh, turned on your video on your site. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for taking the time um, out of your evening to share all this um, wisdom and have this uh, truthful and authentic conversation about what it takes to succeed in, in business. And um, to all of you listening, thank you so much that uh, you've, you've still um, you're still here, you still listen to the, the very end. And um, I wish you, and together with Tineke, we wish you Merry Christmas. And Absolutely. use the time between now and the new year to get your plan sorted, however small it may be. Do something, have something in writing, even if it's like just a one page thing, do something. I mean, we do the one page, and then when you feel enthusiastic about it, then go deeper, do more, have a financial plan. That really is key. And, and then just go for it. Um, fingers crossed and best of luck for everyone. Starting 2018, this will be your year. Believe me, <laughs> it will be your year. All right. Thank I, you so much for listening. Yeah. It, 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 it will be for most of the women because uh, I've been told uh, that in 2018, women get more aware about money. And that's what we need. That's what we talked about. So yeah, definitely yes. 2018 will be the year for all If of you us. have money, mindset issues, yeah. fix them quick. Yeah. There's no need to what? feel restricted by money. Yes. Lisa, my website is powerfulbusinessacademy.com mm -hmm. and the website 
book is Maximum Business Growth for Women dot com. Either you we or might I be should be putting it in the in the links there in the comments. It, we'll do that, Lisa. Okay, okay cool. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. Energy up. Thank Have a great me. day. Thank, Thank you so much for I, talking. I love doing this. Thank